Hey guys, it's Cherish from The Motley News. I'm here to offer you a challenge. It's called the Childlike Wonderment Challenge. Uh, it's very simple, but before I explain the rules to you, um, I'd like to give you some background on how I got this idea. A little while ago, um, I did want to write a piece in response to this new trend of young adults and older adults um, and their newfound obsession with adult coloring books. And I thought like, whoa, what's going on in our society where we need to revert back to childlike activities like coloring? Um, it's very interesting. A lot of people are doing it. You're probably already doing it right now, and that's cool. But I also wanted to like um, talk about the reasons why that could be. A lot of people are saying millennials are doing it. A lot of people are pinning a lot of things on millennials. Um, give millennials a break. You know, they're going through some rough stuff, just like the rest of us are. They're going to school in droves. They're graduating without really knowing what the future looks like for them because of our economic failures. Um, there may or may not be a job out there for them, and while they're waiting, they have like an incredible amount of student loan debt. So everybody just cool it. And maybe that's the reason why we have a lot of fear and anxiety and depression. And coloring, <laughs> as simple as it is, is maybe a way to alleviate some of that fear, anxiety, and depression. Well, my challenge to you guys in the Childlike Wonderment Challenge is to sort out the things that made you happy as a kid and then start doing them on a regular basis. You know, change them around, modify them if you will. Um, but I think there's something to doing those things that we did as a kid. We were doing all right as kids. So um, why not take some of that magic into our own lives right now? And we need to also reevaluate what adulthood means to us. Yes, being an adult is doing the things that you don't want to do, like going to work, um, paying a mortgage, paying your utility bills, and possibly um, taking care of children. I don't know. Whatever your adult blah list is up to you really. I have my own adult blah list. So let us think about adulthood as something else. I like to think of it as the childhood that I am in control of. The second childhood if you will. The things that I didn't get to do when I was a kid, maybe now I can do them. This is a time of liberation even if you are stuck at a terrible job. At least you have a job um, but there are things that we can do to make us feel excited again and I think a lot of people my age are running out of excitement they're a lot more cynical and it's easy to get cynical very very easy I mean just go to grad school you'll feel like a walking dead person without a soul <laughs> it happens so I'd like to give you a list of things that I have been doing to make myself feel like a kid again. And I, I encourage you guys to find your own thing, search your memory way, way back when, and figure out what made this kid happy. Look at that kid. She's so adorable. She had a huge forehead. <laughs> She had a wonderful smile, and some days when I don't feel like smiling, I kind of have to look back at, I think this is five or six year old me, and ask her, like, what are you so happy about? As a teenager, I can tell you I loved writing. I would pretty much zone out in the middle of class just so I could write my novel. I wrote two books <laughs> as a young person. They were both terrible. 
but I've spent so much time and so much energy thinking of different worlds, different characters, awesome settings that I could put them in, conflicts that arise from nothing. Um, well, guess what? I'm doing that again, and I don't know if this book is going to be worth a damn, but I'm having so much fun writing it because it reminds me of when I was younger and I could just sit for hours on end thinking that everything in this world that I'm creating hinges on my next keystroke. And that's making me so happy right now. Um, I bought a wig. <laughs> I bought a wig just like last night on the internet. Why did I do that? Because I don't know, I like having fun with my hair. I like doing interesting things with it. Somebody on a YouTube video said hair is just an accessory. It's like the necklace you're wearing. Do something fun with it. Well, when I was a kid, I didn't necessarily have a whole lot of leeway to do fun things with my hair because my mom made sure that it was perfect in her eyes. That's a whole other story. But now that I'm older, it's like, whatever. I'm going to get a wig. I'm going to wear it for like, I don't know, a few weeks and see how it feels. I'm going to make people think like, ooh, what's going on with her? She looks mysterious. Um, I've made an inspiration board. It's basically three foam poster boards that I've like nailed right beside each other. And since they're foam, you can tack things into them. So I've got pictures um, and inspirational quotes and lists of things that I'm doing. Here, I'll swing you around and show you. Can you see it? There's a calendar over there. There's a lot of fun things. There's my inspirational message to myself. I like looking up at it. I like seeing that, you know, I've put this together with my own two hands. And it's everything about me that I like looking at. Simple as that. No big deal. Make your own inspiration board or vision board or whatever you want to call it. Um, I've been watching a lot of stuff that I used to watch as a kid, and this is weird, um, but I watch on a regular basis, like a lot of, um, really dark, dark, make you think type of documentaries and serious films. The documentaries that I watch are usually like, you know, social awareness. And it helps me learn, of course. If I'm watching something, I can process it better. But really, like, it bums me out. I just got through watching the Netflix original movie, Beast of No Nation. That messed me up for like a day. And <laughs> it's a great movie. I totally recommend it. But I was just feeling like, um... What am I doing with my life when young children in Africa somewhere, it's an unnamed country in Africa, are like being kidnapped and turned into child soldiers? Like, what's my life about? Okay, sometimes you can think like that and it's very helpful and it gives you a global perspective on everything, but also you need to find a way to come down from that. And so, I popped on the latest version of Cinderella and I watched it by myself. And you know what? It felt kind of wonderful. I had to let some of my grad school mentality go and say, I'm watching this based on the pure magic of everything, like the beautiful colors, um, the animals that turn into stuff and help Cinderella out. You know the story. I just had to hang it all up and say, I am watching this while suspending my disbelief and not being very academic at all. And sometimes that's hard to do, but you know, about 30 minutes into it, I was like, oh, this is a relief. I also watched a really awesome movie. It's been out for a while. It's called The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. And if you haven't seen it, I suggest you watch it. It's very lovely. It's, you know, a guy stuck in his humdrum occupation and then 
kind of having these weird imaginary fits where he pretends that he's somebody else, somebody much more interesting. And then, of course, by the end of the film, he has turned into something much more interesting because he fell back on the things from his childhood that made him so happy, like skateboarding and stuff. So that was a really inspirational movie to watch. And I bought the soundtrack so I can listen to all of the wonderful songs that um, really had me ensnared throughout the movie. I've also gone back to watching, and this sounds funny, um, Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers was something that I had to watch as a child, but I never realized how much I needed that kind of stable person on TV. He's just kind of a calm, calm presence that makes you feel like you're special and that everything's gonna be fine. And sometimes as adults, we need a Mr. Rogers to tell us that everything is going to be okay so long as you continue being you. It's weird to say, but you do need somebody to tell you that every once in a while. And Mr. Rogers told me that when I was a kid, and I believed it, and I still do. Um, so go back to watching a cartoon. If you're already watching cartoons, go back to watching Sesame Street or Mr. Rogers. Other things that I've been doing, um, I have been singing out loud a lot more, just really loudly, like shouting, singing, and that may worry my neighbors, um, sorry, <laughs> but I love singing and I love singing loudly. I'm not a good singer. Um, by anybody else's standards, but I like the sound of just letting a full exhale of sound come out and knowing that your voice is yours and you're alive. It sounds simple, but um, I don't know, it just makes me happy. Singing in the shower, singing in the car, singing in the kitchen, singing while I'm writing, you know? And dancing. Dancing is great too. You should be dancing more and you don't have to be a good dancer by any means, but you know, just move your body around. You don't have to do that, but you know what I mean. So anyway, these are some things that I'd like you to think about. Go ahead and comment in the comment box the things that make you happy from your childhood that make you smile. And, you know, also do a video reply and tell the world, you know, what things from your childhood that you'd like to bring back again and that you'd like to make a part of your adult life. Because again, adulthood is second chance childhood. It's up for you to do whatever you want with it, make your own modifications, and start making decisions that are only going to affect you in great ways. <laughs> Until next time, stay cool and stay childlike.